Hello, everybody. So we have a new guest on board. Um, this is Connor out of the Texas market. Um, and I am so excited to actually get things started. Can't wait till you guys meet him. He is amazing, um, very young and highly relatable to a majority of you. So introducing to you guys, Connor, um, you know, say hello. Who is Connor? Hey, guys, what's up? I'm Connor, man. I'm 20 years old. I um I currently own two um apartment units. I just sold another two, and so um um I'm hustling, trying to make my way. So awesome, awesome. All right, so um you know, tell us a little bit about your background, um how you got into the game, how you got started. Yep. Um yeah, just introduce your entire uh your entire story. Yeah, so my uh, my story is I'm from the Dallas Fort Worth area in Texas, as you said. Um, I growing up all my life, I played baseball, and so I had a, a plan to play baseball in college, and then I I ended up committing to a junior college in Texas, and then ended up being there for a little bit, and decided it wasn't the path for me, and so um, I quickly I had some friends go to Texas A&M University and College Station, Texas, and that's where I'm out of now, and then. And so I ended up moving there and going to college there for a little bit. And then I decided to drop out and pursue real estate. Um, I kind of had this decision to make if I wanted to go further into debt and pursue a degree that I really wasn't passionate about, but I had always been passionate about real estate. And so I kind of decided to burn the ships and go all in on real estate. And so I've been working for the last two years for a builder and an investor in College Station. And they kind of learn it as I go. And I just recently um, bought that duplex, as you mentioned. So that's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. As far as like you working for the builder, it gets me a little curious. How is that relationship? And um, you know, what do you exactly do? Because you know, everyone needs a mentor, and you know, to yeah. start learning, get started. It's so. Uh, that's definitely important. So yeah, as um, you know, it's a lot of. They say you're not in the game until you know you're actually in the game, and so. I was reading all the real estate books. I was listening to the podcast, um, kind of the the basic stuff, but you really don't learn until you actually step foot in the game. And so having that mentor to work for who was already doing it just kind of allowed me to be kind of a real estate investor without actually investing any of my own capital yet. And so I got all this firsthand experience. I got to meet the contractors, the subcontractors, um, the managers, um, everybody like that, the people who make the real estate go. And so that kind of allowed me to learn and scale a little bit quicker just because I was already learning as I went. And so that was super cool. And so now I'm doing acquisitions um, for him, managing some properties, um, doing um, some some building stuff we're doing. We're building a couple houses here and there and then um, just buying stuff as we go. So and I look That's to awesome. partner on a couple of deals um at the end so that'll for be fun fix and flips or just long yeah rentals? i think um we've kind of stepped away from the fix and flips and doing more like apartment rentals and so my goal would be to do an apartment complex with them and have them be an equity partner or something like that that is fantastic that's amazing yeah. and then you yep. would just focus on just strictly acquiring yeah, I think um, I like the buy and hold strategy a lot. I do see, um, you know, I'd like to do a couple fix and flips and, you know, build up some capital, but I like the buy and hold strategy just because it's a long game player and it's a long game wealth builder. Speaking of, Connor, where did we meet? Oh, yeah, we met through multifamily strategy. Um, thanks, Cody and Christian. Um, <laughs> the best. So that was a... I mean, just a great connection because you're you're younger in the field, and um, and so it's been super cool to meet other guys who kind of have you know likewise personalities who are in the same game as you are. So it's super cool. And Shyam's out here crushing the sub two deals, seller finance yeah. deals. So it's fun. We can learn from each other. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. There's uh, nothing better than getting into touch with people that are you know like minded around your age. Yep. Um, cause that's super hard to find because everyone around our age, they're just out partying, drinking, you know, yeah, yep. all nine yards and not too many of us. Right. So it's always, yep. uh, it's always fun, but yeah, I tell us the, about, yeah, go ahead. 
I love, I was going to say, I love the quote, you know, show me your five friends and I'll show you your future. And so it shows, you know, the people you hang out with are the people you become. And so a big thing that I like to do is surround myself with people who are doing better than me, who are in the same game as me. And so it's fun and we can all support each other and get to the next level. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I definitely agree with that. Um, and you know, if you're, if you're around people partying and just having fun, then you're just going to be in the same boat. But you know, if you're, yep. if you're definitely around people that are doing a lot better than you, I like to say the smallest, uh, you know, the smallest house on the block always gets his, uh, you know, value or price uplifted by all the, you know, surrounding neighboring uh, homes yeah. around it. So the same little exactly. concept right there. But yeah, yep. speaking I of like homes, that. tell us about your first seller finance deal that you acquired and how it yeah, led to the so, second one. So this was a, um, it was a duplex deal. Um, so let's backtrack a little bit. So, you know, whenever you get into the real estate game, you're kind of taught you've got to save up 20% down to do the conventional loan. Um, you got to have, you know, 50 grand plus saves. So you can throw that at a down payment. You can't do anything creative or you've got to have, you know, gray hair to be in the real estate game. Um, you got to be older. So there's, there's all these kind of myths. And so, um, I didn't have much money to start. And so, but I, it was kind of a game of, you know, not, Oh, I can't do this. It's how can I do this? And so um, I stumbled across multifamily strategy and I kind of learned the creative financing realm. Um, I also started listening to a lot of the bigger pocket stuff with Pace Morby and he was talking about creative financing. And so I stumbled upon the seller financing strategy and then I kind of realized that would be my best bet is to get into the game that way because I'll, it's going to take me a while to save up, you know, 50 to a hundred grand to throw at a down payment on a multifamily property. And so I quickly kind of started building my relationships. Um, once a big thing for me is you want people to like you, trust you and to know you. And so um, if you can do those three things, you're really set off um, to, to be very successful. And so I just started building rapport in the community. I started building relationships with other multifamily real estate investors. And so as soon as the duplex deal popped up that was off market, um, a friend of mine came to me and was like, hey, man, I know a guy. He's looking to do some seller financing stuff. Would you consider that? And so we had coffee together and um, it ended up working out. We kind of worked through some terms. And so that's how I got that deal. And it's a two bedroom, one and a half bath on each side. So. And then that I'm actually fantastic. rehabbing, I'm rehabbing a unit right now, actually. So that's awesome. kind of one of the things, um, it's, it's kind of my first rehab on my own. And so it's fun to like, you know, whenever you're learning on somebody else's dime, it, it's kind of less stressful and you're like, okay, you know, I can't really lose the money, but now it's like, okay, I got to do it. So it's been really yeah. fun. The pressure's on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's fun. You know, it's, you got to have fun in the business and it's all about relationships. Right. Right. Yeah. And that, that's a major uh, component of the entire yeah. strategy that, you know, Cody and yep. Christian implement. And, yep. uh, and I've, it def- I mean, I've learned, I've learned too. Um, you know, you're not in the real estate business, you're in the relationship business. And so you build all these great relationships and then stuff kind of starts just flooding back to you because you're not there to, you know, hassle them about buying property and whatnot. It's more about a relationship. So I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Awesome. Yep. And that's what yeah. you're doing in New Jersey and the New York area. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's all I'm doing. Even uh, more than just, you know, working on acquiring, I'm trying to yep. build as many relationships as I can, you know, go yeah. to every single marketing, uh, you know, marketing event for, you know, different, real estate companies that are, you know, offering different services, things like that, you know, yep. um, social events, just literally building out my network and and staying in touch with every single person, just maintaining relationships, you know, just like for your first, uh, for your first acquisition, you know, it came from a rela- uh, relationship. So yeah, it's a, uh, and let's show you. And, and two, what's super cool is, you know, you meet these guys, the, the so-called players in the game who have been very successful who own a bunch of doors and they're, Mm -hmm. you know, when you talk to these people and you've got drive and passion and they see that you're younger, man, they love to pour into you and they love to give you great advice. And so 
you can really use being young as an advantage. It seems like a disadvantage right now because it's, we don't have the capital, you know, you don't have the experience, but it's a huge advantage if you can multiply on that because the bigger investors love to pour into the smaller investors who are just getting started and they kind of see themselves and the younger investor when they were younger. So if you can make a cool connection like that, it can really help boost your portfolio. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Interesting. You say that everywhere I go, I'm usually the youngest person there and I'm sure you can relate to that. Yeah. And it's, I used to go to these networking events and I was like, man, you know, this, this is pretty nerve wracking. I'm the youngest guy here, but now I go and it's like a huge advantage because, you know, not everybody notices, you know, the 20 to 22 year old guy in there, you know, hanging out, you know, it's not normal. And so people are automatically attracted to that and they, you know, come up to you, ask you, Hey, what you're doing. And so you can really build quick relationships by being younger. So it's a huge advantage. Right, right. They're like, what are you doing out here? Aren't you supposed to be yeah. partying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're like, I mean, they're like, man, I was partying when I was your age or something. So it, right. it's funny you can build, you can build all these great relationships and it's such an, a huge advantage. Society tells us, you know, you got to be older to invest in real estate, but being younger is a huge advantage. A hundred percent. So I wanted to ask you about your goals, but you know, I started thinking, what have you learned from your first acquisition going into your second one, other than just relationships, yeah. just from purely owning the assets? What have you learned along that, uh, you know, along that journey? So I would say um, always double check. This is going to sound pretty obvious, but whenever you're a younger investor and you get your first deal, you know, all your mind is set towards is oh, I'm getting to the closing table and we're going to close it because then, you know, I get the deed and I own it. And so, I was more focused on um, let's just get the property and I'll deal with it afterwards. But I, I kind of wish I would have um, been harder on negotiation at the start. Um, and I, my terms are really good for seller financing, but just um, in terms of price negotiation, I think I could have got the price down a little bit, but I was just, you know, I was a young investor and I'm, I'm going, Hey, I just want to get the deal. Um, so let's just close it and move on. And so that's the biggest thing. And also just always make sure, um, I did an inspection on mine just to double check everything, but just always make sure that you're doing inspections. Um, just, you know, and you don't have to, but always have a third party, you know, a friend of yours who's an experienced investor come walk through with you and just double check, you know, if, if you don't have much and you're putting all, all your money on the line to buy the property and then the AC goes out in a month and you can't pay for it, that's a problem. And so you always just want to have a third kind of party, look over everything and just make sure you're not getting yourself into a job or a bad situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as I said, it, it, it's hard because, you know, you come across that, that little apartment complex, you come across that duplex deal and you're like, oh, I got to buy it. I got to buy it. But then you got to, you got to have the discipline to say, okay, let me double check everything. I mean, I need to, because the worst thing you can do as a first time investor is buy yourself a job or buy something where you lose money. And then it's like, you're back to ground zero again. And so you want to just continually make steps to reach that target goal. Yeah, no, 110% agreed. A ton of investors have been recommending me the same thing. Um, You're trying to buy yourself retirement eventually not another job, right? Yep. So yeah, structure decided, everything, yep. structure everything, you know, um, that you're doing in a way to accomplish that. So a hundred percent. Yeah. And, just, just don't be scared to, you know, get a third party opinion, just have somebody else besides you. And obviously the, whoever showing you the unit, because they're going to be pretty biased, but, um, just have somebody else walk through the unit with you, you know, um, always ask yourself questions, look at the fine print just to make sure you're not buying yourself a job. Mm-hmm. 100%. So what's, uh, what's going to be going on from here on out? What are some of your goals? Um, what's something that you want to accomplish in the near future? And what's the end goal? So I think my next goal is to buy um, a five unit plus apartment complex deal, um, preferably seller finance. Um, I'm looking at a couple right now, going through some um, 
looking at the properties, talking with the owners, kind of seeing what the what the next step is there. Um, I've kind of realized with buying the duplex, um, it's not going to hit my. I want there's a. I've got a cash flow goal in mind that I want cash flow coming in each month, and so I've kind of realized. Look, I mean, with the duplex being bought in the past, duplex. You know, if I keep buying duplexes, it's not gonna it's not gonna hit my goal, and so I've kind of realized, okay, I need to scale up to bigger apartments, and so that's why I'm really looking at the five plus unit apartments now. So, awesome. and I think I would say the end goal is just to, I mean, obviously live off the cash flow, but also just, um, just I mean, I, I love investing in other people, and so I think, um just having the time and freedom to go to coffee with people, go to lunch, you know, just enjoying purely enjoying what I'm doing and not just doing it because I have to anymore. And so, you know, right now I still have to, because I don't have that cash flow goal, but in the, in the long run, you know, down the road, like it'd be fun to just each money is coming in each month and I don't have to work for it. And so, you know, I can, I can chat with cool guys like you and I can hang out and kind of do whatever I want when I want. And so, yeah, no, a hundred percent. Definitely. And, um, I wanted to actually ask you, you know, since, uh, you're speaking of, you know, going into the, uh, the five unit, things like that. Um, I was having trouble getting, you know, multi, uh, multifamily in the Texas area, um, yep. that are, that's just smaller multifamily, like, you know, five to 12 units in that area. Um, yep. and you know, other investors, in the you know commercial multifamily space, they've told me that hey, there's a, a large abundance of smaller multifamily compared to the larger units. You know, so yep. uh, what's your thought and opinions on that? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, um, where there's a will, you know, there's opportunity, and so um, a big thing for me, and this is going back to you know how we met through multifamily strategy. Um, a big thing was instead of, you know, everybody's hounding these people on, hey, I want to buy your property. I'll give you X amount, um, you know, and then um, besides everybody saying, um, you know, hey, I see you own this apartment complex. Um, I'd love to take you to coffee to learn how you did that because I want to do that. And so I've kind of done the second strategy there. And it's helped me build, as I said, it's all about relationships. You're building these relationships. And so a lot of these guys who own, you know, the five to 25, 30 unit apartment complexes are kind of the mom and pop owners. They bought it way back when, you know, it's it's like 50% occupied. They don't really care because it's cash flows and it, it, you know, it just doesn't matter. And so I've met with a lot of these people and a lot of them actually bought them seller financed, but um you know, you just learn, you learn from them. And then eventually we're like, Hey, you know, I see this guy is 25 years old. Um, he's younger. I like him. He's got goals. Um, maybe it'd be cool to pass this down to him. And so instead of, I used to, you know, cold call these people and say, Hey, you know, I want to buy your property. I want to buy this. I want to buy that. And it was obviously just a big turnoff. And so now we've flipped that to relationships and then it's kind of opened up some cool doors. And then that always allows you to, you know, and even it's not a guarantee that they're going to sell you their property, but it puts you in the window. And then if they don't want to sell theirs, but they know, you know, Johnny down the street wants to sell his apartment complex, you know, it, it kind of builds up good rapport and then you can start getting referrals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely a hundred percent. I definitely agree. Um, and it's, it's a contact sport, like they say, you know, Yeah. right. So and it's just, you know, it's, you need to remember that you're in the relationship business. It's not, it's not always just going to be transactional. It's, uh, you know, well, that's one thing I've learned too, whenever I did that duplex deal is you go through so, I mean, if you think about all the people that you talk to getting the deal, you know, the title company, the lender, um, you know, the, the, the bank, if you're using a bank, the owners, property managers, realtors, there's so many people that you come in contact with. And so if you do one thing, that's kind of a like bad reputation or something, you know, that, that spreads really quickly. And so it's important to always build a good relationship because that's going to carry you on to the next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree a hundred percent. 
Now, Connor, you seem like a highly driven individual. What is your why? What keeps you going? I would say, um, you know, I love, as I said, I love, I mean, the investing part is fun, but more than that, it's just, um, knowing what my cash flow goal is and knowing, okay, if I can hit that cash flow goal by the age I want to, then I can travel with my family. I can hang out with anybody I want to. I can take trips. I can, you know, spend money to invest in other people. Um, so I think I'm chasing just the freedom, you know, money is a tool, but it allows you to have all this other stuff that's, you know, freedom, time with family, time with friends. And so, um, that's kind of my why is just keeping that in the back of my head. Whenever I go through adversity is saying, okay, you know, if I can get through this and get to my goal, then it's going to be really worth it. So, yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Sticking to it. Um, yep. and you know, a little tip for everybody else, you know, anybody that's getting started, um, just in the space and, you know, is discouraged, how can they get started and make it a little easier for them to just get into the game? What would you tell them? I know it's relationship based, but is there any tricks or tips that you would give out to anybody that's just getting started, um, to build those strong relationships like you have? So I would say a big thing is don't listen to people who aren't doing what you want to do. You know, whenever I um, decided not to go to school anymore, um, decided to pursue real estate, a lot of people had told me, you know, Connor, you shouldn't be doing real estate this young. You need to go to college and think about, you know, what you want to do. Um, you need to play it safe. And so I think a lot of, you know, our, our generation, uh, you know, your teacher, um, pastor, parent, whatever it is, are going to tell you, hey, just be careful, you know, don't take the risk, don't do this, don't do that. But in the end, you know, listen to people who have done what you want to do, you know, don't listen to your teacher who makes 60 grand a year who doesn't invest in real estate, listen to your mentor who's, you know, owns hundreds of doors. And so you just, that's a big thing. And, and I see that a lot as people are like, you know, if they didn't do it themselves, they don't think you can do it. And so um, just be careful about who you're listening to. And, I've, you know, there's always something good you can pull from anybody from a conversation, but take the good stuff and filter out the bad stuff. And I would say just keep keep that in the back of your head as you push through stuff because things are going to get tough. But if you can remain on that one goal of, you know, getting your first property, um, buying a duplex, buying a fourplex, whatever it may be, that can push you over that hedge. Hmm. Interesting. A hundred percent. And, um, you know, I definitely agree, you know, listen to people that want to, you know, help you also achieve the same goals that they've already achieved and, you know, are where yep. you want to be. Right. Don't listen to yeah. people that are completely in a different ball game than where you yeah. want to be at. It's, it sounds pretty common, but it's, it's hard to do and it. it happens to me all the time. And, but, and don't be disrespectful about it. You know, there's, as I said, there's always something good you can pull from anybody, but just remember, listen to the people who have done what you want to do. And as I said earlier, that's why a mentor is so important because they've been in the shoes that you're in. They've already made it per se. And so they can give you great advice because you want to get to where they are. So, and what better person to learn from than the person who's already done it. So exactly exactly is there is there a nice way to find a mentor or so how i found mine and i don't this might be good might be bad i just went to my i literally googled online local real estate meetups around me and then um i just i walked in the building and i was like hey um, my name's connor i'm 18 years old um i want to get into the real estate game um i'll work for you for free you know, whatever it takes, I just want to get into the real estate game. And so I met two people and they were like, Hey, you should come work for me and you can learn and do some stuff. And then another guy I met and I actually ended up working for him and he's been my mentor ever since. And so I would just say, get yourself in the room of real estate investors. Um, cause real estate investors hang out with other real estate investors. They know other people who own real estate. And so it's like a little life hack. If you can just get around them, you'll start naturally kind of catching some, some of the benefits and reaping some of the benefits. So. 
hundred percent. Awesome. Awesome. I yeah. absolutely love it. Um, yeah. so many of the things that you've said I've implemented myself. So yep. I definitely give, you know, a hundred percent, um, you know, support to everything you said. Um, anyone yeah. that's looking to get started, definitely listen to everything that Connor just said because they're golden nuggets. Um, you know, and how, who knows like how long it took you to get all that information, you know, um, you're a giver. That's awesome. Yeah. It's a lot of trial and error and it's, you know, but, and two, remember when you're building these relationships that all these people are human. Um, and so have some personality too, you know, be, be fun with them, but, um, you know, explain them what you want to do. And then the biggest piece that I've learned is if you can get people to buy into who you are, then that really changes the game because it's no longer, um, they're just investing in you. It's like, they're buying into who you are. And so, if you can really get that, that helps a ton as well. Agreed. Agreed. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah. Let's, let's wrap things up. It was a pleasure having you on here. Um, where can everybody find you? Um, I'm on Instagram. It's the Connor Kenny. Um, feel free to DM me with any questions. Um, I'm pretty quick at responding on there as well. And then you can email me too. It's Connor Kenny three at gmail.com. I'm pretty quick on email as well. So. Awesome. Awesome. I'll actually link everything down in the description. Like always. Yeah, that'd be great. But yeah. Fantastic having you on here, Connor. Look forward to having you on here soon as you, you know, accomplish uh, more acquisitions. We look forward to yep. seeing you getting a, you know, a five plus unit next and uh, would love to, you know, share your, you know, have you on here again, share your information about, you know, your new acquisitions. John, man, really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Till next yep. time.